Saudi Arabia Criminal Court discharges Ibrahim Ibrahim. Bandits release Zamfara Monarch's son after collecting Okada as ransom. Sokoto government have allocated hectares of land for new mechanic village project. On business, India becomes world's fifth largest economy, overtakes UK and France. On sports, Manchester United defeat Chelsea for the third time this season. And on the international scene, Queen Elizabeth II's nephew in latest royal marriage fleet. Welcome to Standard Voice Television News. I am Musa Joy Unyoza. The criminal court in Maka, Saudi Arabia, has finally discharged and acquitted Malam Ibrahim Ibrahim. This followed a strong defense constituted by Governor Belo Matsawali and dispatched to the kingdom to ensure his discharge and acquittal in the case that came up yesterday in Maka. Malam Ibrahim, a renowned Islamic cleric from Zamfara State, wrongly accused of drug trafficking in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, was on the death row. Leader of the team to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the Zamfara State Commissioner of Special Duties, and Al Haji Mohammed Sadiq Miturari, broke the news from Maka and said Ibrahim is now a free man. It will be recalled that Governor Belo Matawali earlier met with President Muhammad Buhari to intervene in the matter, who in turn instructed the Minister of Justice to handle the issue. It was, however, evident that Ibrahim required the services of advocates, which Governor Belo Matawale swiftly handled by employing a team of lawyers for Ibrahim and constituted a delegation, include a lawyer representing the National Commission on Diaspora, from the Federal Ministry of Justice to Saudi Arabia to monitor the proceeding. With this development, any moment from now, Malam Ibrahim would be flown back to Nigeria and be reunited with his family. Bandits have released the son of the district head of Gayari town in Zamfara State, Yasir Mohammed, after collecting a motorcycle as ransom. The Punch reported that the district head of Gayari, Alahaji Hassan Mohammed, was kidnapped by bandits alongside his son, Yasir. The kidnappers later released the monarch, continued to keep his son, and demanded a brand new motorbike as ransom. Narrating the order to the punch, a family member, Al Haji Farouk Gayari, said when they realized that the bandits were not ready to release Yasir without the motorcycle, they have to tax themselves to buy it and deliver it to them. Malam Farouk stated that Yasir was released on Sunday but could not get back home until Monday afternoon. He trekked for almost 13 hours from the forest where he was held captive to the town because the bandit refused to give him a lift to the main road. The executive governor of Sokoto State, Amin Waziri Tambual, has allocated over 11 hectares of land that is on the aggregate of one kilometer square to various automobile mechanics congested in different locations within Sokoto Metropolitan. The land allocated will accommodate over 800 mechanics with an average space of 12 meters by 10 meters and 9 meters by 10 meters square meter standard respectively. The village is divided according to sections for easy distribution of labor and skills acquisition where professionally every type of motor mechanic has a section related to his area of specialization and brand of vehicle and its class, that is, Mesdi Benz, Toyota, Honda, Kia, and the others. Similarly, heavy-duty trucks have its separate section. Likewise, there is auxiliary section where various kinds of business associated with automobile mechanics, such as spare parts, tire dealer, battery charging, welders and panel beaters are all going to allocate their own space. 
In fact, motorbike mechanics and plant generator mechanics are also not left out. The Ministry of Lands and Housing have since started allocation to beneficiaries. Works have started in earnest at the new mechanic village at Kwanawa under effective supervision of Alahaji Manir Mohamed Dainya, the Deputy Governor, who was instructed to provide all necessary logistics towards speedy completion of the project. The Governor directed him to ensure adequate provision of all essential services such as roads, water, electricity and security. The Deputy Governor said they have already mobilized to the site and mapped out the work plan towards achieving the tax assigned to them without delay in line with the directives of the Governor Amin Wajiri Tambua. He said any mechanic yet to be allocated is based at New Mechanic Village is advised to contact Ministry of Lands and Housing, especially those at Buzai Axis, Samarod, and other non-suitable locations. This is an opportunity in compliance with global standard practice in all civilized societies. To further strengthen the sector of education, health and agriculture in Kano State, Governor Abdullahi Omar Ganduje solicited for stronger synergy between the state and the United Kingdom, hinting that policies around the state, hinting that policies around the sectors are deeply entrenched to have great impact on human development. He disclosed this when he was receiving the British High Commissioner to Nigeria, Ms. Kratriona Liang, who paid him a courtesy visit at Government House, Kano State, on Tuesday, assuring that the state is ready to always see that interventions that come to the state are supported by the state, owing them and making sure that they are sustained. In the education sector, he made reference to the recent implemented free and compulsory primary and secondary schools education policy, explaining that just recently they came up with this policy, which they know is a heavy-loaded policy statement. He urged the United Kingdom to give a helping hand in propelling and supporting this noble program that would address the issue of out-of-school children with all seriousness and determination. He further reveals that at the level of Northern Governors Forum, they discuss the issue of al majari phenomenon, emphasizing that they have some further discussions at the Northern Governors Forum about the movement of al majaris in the hands of their teachers. While in the area of healthcare delivery system, the Governor mentioned effort by the state directed towards primary healthcare delivery system, which he said many feats have been achieved in the area. By way of informing the British High Commissioner, Governor Kanduje explained the effort being put by the state in making sure that private health care providers are also controlled where an agency was established by the state that would be looking at the private sector for effective compliance with the state policies. He mentioned that in the area of agriculture, they are doing their best to see that farmers get all the necessary support to do well in their farmlands. In her remarks, Ambassador Liang commended a state government under Governor Ganduje for the interest in the human development. After disclosing an upcoming project tag mutual accountability, she said the project would be mutually beneficial to both parties. The Senate on Tuesday confirmed the nomination of Captain Musa Shaibu Nuhu as Director General of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. Captain Nuhu's confirmation was sequel to the consideration of the report on the screening of the nominee by the Senate Committee on Aviation. Chairman of the committee, Senator Smart Adeyemi, in his presentation said that the nominee has requisite experience and possess relevant academic and professional qualifications. Senator Adeyemi added that arising from his wealth of experience in the aviation sector, the committee considers Captain Musa Shaibu Nuhu suitable for appointment as Director General Nigeria Civil Aviation Authority. The Senior President Ahmed Lawan on January 28, 2020, read a request on the floor from President Muhammad Buhari for the confirmation of Captain Mohamed Shaibu as Director General for the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. 
The Senate President, Mr. Ahmed Lawan, on Tuesday directed the majority and minority leaders, alongside the Chairman of Senate Committee on Rules and Business, Sadiq Omar, to make a list of bills not signed by President Mohamedou Buhari. Some of the bills rejected by the President are Petroleum Industry Governance Bill, Electoral Amendment Bill, Digital Rights Bill, Peace Car Bills, and Ajakuta Steel Company Bill. Mr. Lawan's comment was sequel to the second reading of a bill seeking to establish a federal health sciences institution in Otupo, Benue State. Although reintroduced by Benue Senator Abba Moro, the bill was sponsored by David Mark in the 8th Senate and was passed on July 6, 2018, but it was neither assented to nor rejected by the President. After the second reading of the bill, Mr. Lawan recalled that he had commended Mr. Mark on the bill in the previous assembly. We'll be right back after this short commercial break. Stay tuned. Welcome back on Business. Aguay Rita has more detail. Welcome to Business Desk. A U.S. based think tank World Population Review in its report said India's economy is the fifth largest in the world with a GDP of 2.94 trillion US dollars and that it is developing into an open market economy from its previous article policies. The report said India emerged as the world fifth largest economy by overtaking the UK and France in 2019. The size of the UK economy is 2.3 trillion US dollar, and that of France is 2.71 trillion US dollar. The report further said that in purchasing power party, India's GDP is 10.51 trillion US dollar, exceeding that of Japan and Germany. Due to India's highest population, India's GDP per capita is US dollars For comparison, the U.S. is US$2,794. India reached GDP growth. However, it is said it is better to be weakened for the tough straight years from 7.5% to 5%. The report observed that India's economic liberation began in the early 1990s and included industrial regularization, reduced control of foreign trade and investment, and privatization of state-owned enterprises. It said these measures have helped India accelerate economic growth. India's service sector is the fast growing sector in the world accounting for 60% of the economy and 28% of employment, adding that manufacturing and agriculture are two other significant sectors of the economy. The US-based World Population Review is an independent organization without a political affliction. And that is all on business decks. I'm a Guarita. And on sports, Sufyan Abubakar has more detail. Hello, welcome to Standard Voice Television Sports Room. I am Abu Sufyan Abubakar, and as usual, I bring the sports updates. Manchester United defeated Chelsea at Stamford Bridge on Monday night to make it three straight wins against the Blues this season. The match ended 2-0 in favour of the visiting side. Anthony Marshall scored the opener in the 45th minute before Hardy Maguire doubled United's lead mid into the second half. Controversies were all over the match with Chelsea denied two good goals after VAR checks. One a header by Curtis Zuma and another a flying header by Olivier Giroud. As said earlier, this is the third time United are defeating Frank Lampard's Chelsea after already beating them 4-0 in the opening EPL victory of the season and another 2-1 victory in the Carabao Cup. Frank Lampard will hope Chelsea comes back to winning ways before next week's UEFA Champions League clash with Bayern Munich. UEFA Champions League action is back this week with Liverpool travelling to Madrid to face Atletico Madrid while PSG also travelled to Germany to face informs Haaland's Borussia Dortmund all on Tuesday night. On Wednesday night, FC Barcelona will fly to Italy to play Gattuso's Napoli without injured Luis Suarez, Usman Dembele and most likely Jordi Alba who also got injured in Barcelona's 2-1 home win against Getafe in Spanish La Liga on Saturday. And that's all we have on sports today. Back to the newsroom. 
and on the international scene. Britain's Queen Elizabeth II announced a list of new bills ranging from implementing a yet-to-be-finalized EU divorce agreement to criminal sentencing. Queen Elizabeth's nephew David Armstrong Jones is set to divorce. A spokesman said on Monday the second marriage split in the British royal family announced within a week. Armstrong Jones, 58, the son of Queen Elizabeth, late sister Princess Margaret, and his 49-year-old wife, Serena, have been married since 1993. A spokesman for the couple said the area and contents of Snowdon have amicably agreed that their marriage has come to an end and that they shall be divorced. They ask that the press respect their privacy and that of their family. The heir is the first person in the line of succession to the throne, but is not a direct descendant of Queen Elizabeth. He was born fifth in the line, but is now 21st in the order of succession. Known professionally as David Linley, the heir of Snowdon is a furniture maker and was the chairman of Christie's Auction House. The couples have two children, Charles, 20 years, and 17-year-old Margarita. The news comes after Queen Elizabeth's oldest grandchild, Peter Phillips, and his wife, Autumn, announced last Tuesday that they have separated and would divorce. Phillips, 42, and his Canadian wife, Autumn, will share custody of their two daughters, and both will remain in Glossentia, southwest England. Phillips is the son of the monarch's daughter, Princess Anne, and her first husband, Mark Phillips. He is the eldest of her eight grandchildren. He has no royal title and has never carried out duties on behalf of the royal family, and so does not receive a public income. He was born fifth in the line to the front, but is now fifteenth. The marriage breaks down have piled more misery on the royal family. They come after Queen Elizabeth's grandson, Prince Harry, and his U.S. wife, Meghan, quit their royal rules last month in search of financial independence and moved to Canada. Meanwhile, the monarch's second son, Prince Andrew, stepped back from all royal duties in November following a public outcry over his friendship with U.S. sex offender Jeffrey Edson. That has been the news from Standard Voice Television. To end the news, a quick look at the major headlines. Saudi Arabia criminal court discharges Ibrahim Ibrahim. Bandit released Zanfara Munak's son after collecting Okada as ransom. Sokoto government have allocated hectares of land for new mechanic village project. On business, India becomes world's fifth largest economy, overtakes UK and France. On sports, Manchester United defeat Chelsea for the third time this season. And on the international scene, Queen Elizabeth II's nephew in latest royal marriage split. That's the news on behalf of the editorial crew and the head of news and current affairs department, Alhaji Ibrahim Garobatunau. I still remain Mosa Joy Oyoza. Stay tuned.